before their embrace of radical Islam. The leaders of the Marawi siege ran local militant groups in the southern Philippines. Isnilin Hapalon, Islamic State's Amir for Southeast Asia, was better known here as the leader of the Abu Sayyaf group ASG, which specialized in kidnapping foreigners for ransom. The Mout brothers, Abdullah and Omar, headed an eponymous private militia targeting businesses for extortion before rebranding themselves as Isranau, and joining forces with Hapalon. Hapilon's faction pledged allegiance to Islamic State in 2014, with the Maud following in early 2015, beginning a series of clashes with the authorities before fighting together under the black flag of Isan Marawi. During the conflict, Islamic State made enthusiastic use of their footage in propaganda videos, claiming a new front in Southeast Asia, and calling for fighters who could not make it to the Middle East to travel to the Philippines instead, although they stopped short of declaring a formal vilayat, or province, in Marawi. Image the economic capital of the province has now been reduced to rubble it would be naive to assume their ambitions in the region ended with the deaths of Hapalon and the Mout brothers. This siege did not come out of nowhere. The island of Mindanao has a long history of armed conflict, and a tradition of enmity towards the central government. While the larger separatist groups have joined a peace process, and fought alongside government forces in Marawi, progress has been slow, and poor governance and grinding poverty prevail, alongside a plentiful supply of weapons. The conditions that made this fertile recruiting ground for militants before the latest crisis all remain in place. Add to this that the economic capital of the province has now been reduced to rubble, along with tens of thousands of homes and livelihoods. There might be anger towards us for starting the conflict, but that could quickly become refocused on the government's handling of it, as displaced families return to the city to find they have nothing left. Senior military officers here understand this. The same special forces SOLR who escorted our team into the main battle area, took us through a PowerPoint presentation on the work he is already doing in local evacuation centers. The rehabilitation starts before the battle ends, Lt. Villarosa said, as he showed us the project he had led to turn mortar boxes into planters for crops at a nearby camp, transforming tools of war into tools for peace. The project is already yielding its first seedlings, and helping to return a degree of purpose and self-esteem to camp residents, as well as augmenting their basic rations. Basic needs will always come first, LT Villarosa explained, and where those needs are not being met, people will be vulnerable to exploitation by militant groups. As Islamic State loses ground in Iraq and Syria, it is likely to redouble its efforts to exploit local causes and grievances, and areas of poor governance. Katie Stollard he has seen this firsthand around his base in Basilan, formerly as Neelan Hapilan Stronghold, where he is involved with the From Fighters to Farmers program. If the government doesn't act on food security, SOLRS will, he said. We have a mantra where there is hunger, there is anger. But the other group that understands this all too well is Islamic State and, as it loses ground in Iraq and Syria, it is likely to redouble its efforts to exploit local causes and grievances, and areas of poor governance. This is not just an issue for the Philippines, but across the wider region. The urgent priority now in Marawi is to rebuild not just homes, but trust in the government the success of which will determine whether this was an isolated incident, or the beginning of the rise of Asia. Is Katie's report for Marawi can be seen on Sky News from 7 p.m. Sky Views is a series of comment pieces by Sky News editors and correspondents, published every morning previously on Sky Views Faisal Islam The Brexit Generation Game.